I have a quick question. Are you aware of any government, whether it's our own, having possession of an alien body? I'm not going to comment on it. Yeah. Jim Simivan has worked for the Department of Defense for almost 30 years. For a few of those years, he was the Director of Clandestine Operations in the United States Pentagon. And although he is now retired and no longer works for the U.S. government, he still maintains his security clearances. My name is Jim Semivan. I'm a retired CIA officer. I worked as a spy for 25 years in the CIA's clandestine service. Had a wonderful career there, enjoyed it very, very much. Was lucky enough to be a member of the Senior Intelligence Service. I currently consult with the intelligence community uh, on a part-time basis. Jim recently said some very interesting things about what the U.S. government knows about the recent UAP incidences, how it has mishandled the information in the past, and what it plans to do to disclose it to the public. This is not some random deathbed confession without credible background or evidence. This is a well-known former government director admitting that this is a soft disclosure style podcast. Before we listen to what he has to say, we first have to review why Jim is coming clean about this through meeting Tom DeLong. I, I, there was a very important person that I met early on, long before I knew Jim, and I, and I remember that somebody that was a very high ranking person at a very important government place said, you should meet this person. He's a very interesting person, very high ranking person. And, uh, and I said, because I pitched this idea of what to the stars could be. And so this person comes to San Diego. They put me on the phone with this other person and they said, hey, this is Tom. And he's got some great ideas about how to talk to the youth about, you know, life in the universe and so on. This person on the phone was like, well, there's no evidence for that. I don't believe in any of that. Um, it's just not my thing. But why don't you fly up tomorrow <laughs> and come meet me? You know? And I was like, to talk about what? Something that doesn't exist? So this person was just like, it was a two-hour conversation. None of it's real. None of it exists. But I want to hear what your plan is or what you're trying to achieve. You know? And I remember this person was setting up a venture to look for life in the universe somewhere with some really cool technology and a lot of money. Um, I don't want to say too much. Um, and I was like, you know, sir, you're, you're looking for life out there. You are raising all this money and you're doing this great thing for humanity. And I believe it's out there. I'm all, but I, I want to talk about the ones that are here. I think young people need to know about the ones that are here. And I remember I was banging on the table, you know, because I knew that the meeting was kind of veering off for two hours. Like, you know, it was going to get shut down. I wasn't going to get anywhere. So I got really full of passion and I was like, you want to look out there? Great. I need your help because I want to discuss what's here, the ones here, you know? And then he took a deep breath and then he just looked at me and then he, and then he said, he goes, let's introduce him to so-and-so. And then the other guy next to him turns his head and he goes, are you sure? He goes, yeah, I'm sure. We know through WikiLeak articles that Tom DeLong was speaking with some very high ranking officials around the same time that he had these meetings. Unfortunately, due to those leaks, Tom lost contact with those officials whom are still active military. But it led Tom to meet Tim Sullivan and Lou Elizondo, two retired Pentagon officials. And that's how it led to that other meeting. And the next thing you know, you got these people gathering around that want to talk about what's here, but they're very limited on what they can say. So I have to like kind of put things together. And then fortunately I meet Jim and Jim teaches me a lot about how to absorb information and how to digest it and how to hold on to it, even if it doesn't, because it doesn't have enough about it that means anything yet, but it might be important later. Um, I'm not him, but I, I, I'm trying to learn as much as I can from him. Tom went on to write some fiction books through speaking with other government officials that reveal secrets about the government's UFO problem and the truth behind the whitewashed stories that cover up many of the true encounters of the much bigger deception. Uh, next up is Jim Semvan, who has a very, very impressive biography, but I thought maybe he could introduce himself and talk about maybe how he came to come to know Tom. I, I met Tom, gosh, what, it was about five years ago, Tom? Uh, Man, I think there so. was, uh, yeah, uh, there was a group of uh, 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 
I'd say intelligence community, defense department people that study this topic for a long time, uh, very informally and unofficially. Um, Here, Jim is talking about a group that he and his fellow colleagues were in outside of work hours. And uh, we had got together. I got a phone call from one of them one day, and he said, uh, do you know this fellow named Tom DeLong? And I said, no. He said, Blink-182. I said, no, it doesn't ring any bells. He said, well, he wrote a book uh, called Secret Machines, Chasing Shadows. And there's a lot of information in that book um, that that is, well, running true to form. And, and it we don't know whether or not some of the information on some of the programs that the US government had was being leaked or not. And we knew that Tom, well, at least I was told that Tom had a lot of senior uh, government of officials that he was in touch with, his, his advisors. Uh, so uh, I, I, we took it upon ourselves to go talk to Mr. DeLong. <laughs> Mr. DeLong. And, uh, and I was the one basically uh, asked, well, why don't you figure it out? You know, you're, you're, the, you're the operations officer, you know, you did this for a living. But uh, as Jim will tell you, the first day I met Jim, I was like, thank God, you know, he's like, who are you and what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm looking for somebody to work with me. I, I, I think we can do something great for the world. I just don't really know how to do it by myself. I need, I need some help. And, and thankfully, Jim and a bunch of the people that he knew and was working with felt the same way. It's, it was just a good time to come together. Jim went on to explain some more background story, but was later questioned as to whether or not the government has covered up these UFO stories in the past, specifically mentioning the Condon report, which was a government UFO cover-up. As the government gets older and as we learn from these mistakes, things really do get better. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, when you look at like the Condon report, that was a, it was a total whitewash, total whitewash. And, and they basically came out and said, you know, we're just gonna we're just gonna make fun of people who believe in UAPs and UFOs and all this kind of stuff, and that was all. They shouldn't have done that, uh, and it was actually one of the reasons why a lot of us in this these unofficial government workers decided we're gonna go out. We're, we're gonna take this private, and I we told the highest levels of government that's what we're gonna be doing because they can't seem to get this out. I don't know why. I've had talks with them, but they can't get it out. And none of them had any issues with us doing this. They didn't have any issues with Tom. I mean, it was just go ahead, go ahead and keep us posted. Jim and Tom and many other former government employees went on to develop a business in the private sector to push disclosure forward, which pushed the Pentagon to require the Department of Defense to produce a UAP task force report, quickly explaining the UAP problem. When the UAP task force report came out, I, I understood what it was going to be. Uh, it's just an adumbration. It, it was an outline uh, of what they're planning on doing. There was no way they could put together any kind of substantive report, any kind of intelligence assessment based on this in the short amount of time that they had. And they only took, uh, you know, 144 incidents. My God, I mean, that's and just from the Navy. Uh, I mean, there are hundreds of thousands of incidents that have happened that credible witnesses have seen. So I wasn't surprised. The, 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 and I thought the, the, the writing in there was obviously done by the DNI. It was very, very well crafted, very tight writing. I think they took some pot shots at the Air Force, which mm -hmm. I'm glad they did because I don't know where the hell the Air Force has been in all this. Mm -hmm. uh, well, actually, I sort of do, but... Um, uh, but the most important piece I felt uh, was the Deputy Secretary of Defense memo that came out at the same time that was issued on July 25th. That memo came out and said, knock it off, cat's out of the bag, we are going to go after this, we're going we're to develop requirements, and requirements are basically means that it's an intelligence term for, uh, for questions. We're going to develop these questions. Everybody's going to have to answer them, and 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 we're going to put money towards this. We're going to put people towards this. That's huge. That's absolutely huge. And um, and uh, so I thought I was very very happy when 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 I saw that. As a result, NASA believes that the discovery of extraterrestrial life is imminent. So they began to put together 24 theologians to discuss how this would affect different religions. Did you know that scientists are hiring priests? I'm sure you're wondering, just as I was, exactly why scientists and priests are working together. They're complete polar opposites. Well, 
NASA is actually hiring priests for its next mission. That's because, as per reports, NASA essentially wants to assess exactly how humans would react to alien life. And that's why they want to understand how it really changes our perceiving of God and of how we were created, which is why they're actually going ahead and hiring priests. And this is where it gets really weird. Because from out of left field, one of the contributors to this conversation suddenly speaks up and asks about alien bodies. And the response to this is both shocking and perplexing if you are one that can and does regularly read between the political lines. Mm -hmm. I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. Are you aware of any government, whether it's our own, having possession of an alien body? Are you asking me? Any, Jim or Tom? I'm not gonna comment on it. Yeah. Do you agree this is a massive deception? Leave a comment below describing what you think is going on here. Please continue to send me interesting clips about this phenomenon to bradburnham at protonmail.com and I will continue to share everything that I have found and others have sent me with you. And don't forget to share Starfall with everybody you know. Stay safe, stay tuned in because just like you saw in the last video, this is about to get crazy. See you all right here real soon.